Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai, all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Makakodash. Double honors to our apostles and notice that great millstone who taught us his truth and who rule well. Peace, love, say, teachers, and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. Back again with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Ratazai. It's edifying the two, the sheep that is out there, you know, the hopeful elect, you know. Which um, the Most High Heavenly Father has prepared World War III with thermonuclear destruction, the invasion of Yahweh Shai, you know, coming back within the chariots. And those of you that who through faith, you know, believe the words that are being spoken by the prophets. You know, hopefully you are part of the elect. And if you are part of the elect, you're going to be delivered by way of the glorious arcs, which are the chariots. Now, you have men that are coming in the same spirit and energy as Noah, you know, who for 120 years was condemning the world and was telling them the judgment that the Most High Heavenly Father had pronounced against the wicked. Now, at that time upon the earth, it had not rained. You know, Yahweh had only caused the mist to come up from the ground to water the garden. All right, there, there have only been a mist. You know, so there was no rain. So when Noah was preaching, that rain was finally gonna come and it was gonna be in so much to the point that it drowned the world all right and that it was going to kill off a lot of people no one believed him and that right there by definition is what is known as normalcy bias but scripturally it's just and spiritually it's just the most high heavenly father blinding individuals from the truth that is right before them and that's the reason why you have scriptures like the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, in the ninth verse, which reads, it says, and he said, go and tell this people, hear you indeed, but understand not, see you indeed, but perceive not. So the reason that people can't see what's obvious and before them is because the Most High Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, to whom be all praise, honor, and glory, he have blinded them from seeing the truth. So that's the reason why you can't see what is right before your very eyes. So them back then, they couldn't perceive that the world was getting ready to be destroyed, even though there was a witness witnessing against them and condemning them because of their actions. And that world back there was so corrupt and was so wicked and so evil in so much that the Most High Heavenly Father had pronounced the judgment of flooding everything upon the earth, save Noah, his wife, Shem, his wife, Ham, his wife, Japheth, and his wife, and two of each living creature upon the earth. But during this time, when the Most High Heavenly Father destroys his world, well, the world meaning he ends the, the rulership and the reign of Esau Edom, He's not going to destroy all of the animals upon the planet Earth, and he's not going to destroy, you know, all of the nations upon the Earth. But he's going to make a slow slaughter, slaughter, and to the point where, you know, there's a lot of destruction. The Bible says that men's bodies cast out like dung upon the Earth, and we're pronouncing this, and the fact that we're pronouncing. You know, this judgment, which is the judgment of Yahweh, which he have already pronounced, we're just letting you know what he's getting ready to carry out. Does this make us wicked? Because we say that people are going to die, men, women, and children. Does this make us evil? All right, certainly we are the prophets of doom, <laughs> because that's what we're prophesying. I remember Trump said the prophets of doom. All right, because what's the end of this world, man? All right, does not the scripture say 
within the let's see the book of second Ezra, the seventh chapter i want to say that's either verse 44 or 43 it's 43 and it reads it says but the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of immortality for to come wherein corruption is past and temperance is at an end infidelity is cut off which is unfaithfulness i which should not be faithful righteousness is grown and truth is sprung up then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed nor to oppress him that have gotten the victory and we're going to get the victory through keeping the law says your commandments of the most high heavenly father but ultimately our faith in Yahweh Shai, all right, which activates where we come short of keeping the law, says and commandments. Because if you break the, the law, says and commandments, how can you atone if you don't believe in Yahweh Shai? Who is the atonement? So we're preaching to our people to repent, all right, to get themselves right, because the Lord is getting ready to bring doom upon the earth, which is destruction. The same energy and spirit that Noah came in, man. All right, which was righteousness. Although Noah condemned the earth, as it says right here within the book of um, Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the 7th verse, it says, By faith, I right, Noah, being warned of Yahweh, uh, warned of the God of, of things, uh, warned of Yahweh of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness, all right, which is by faith. So you want to know why we're out there? You want to know why we do these lessons? It's through faith. All right, it's through faith. It's through our belief in the scriptures and that and that gift of faith, all right, that Yahweh has poured out upon us, that has us coming in the that have us coming in the same energy and vibration as Noah. All right. So it's through faith and it's also through fear, 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 because what does the scripture say within the book of um, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter in the 11th verse? Well, let's read it. 2 Corinthians 5 and 11. It says, knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto Yahweh. And I trust, all right, and I, uh, Salakia, and I trust also our main manifest unto your conscience. So through fear. All right, this spiritual ark is being prepared and has been prepared, which is this truth. And it will be in your best interest, all right, to, to get aboard it. Because wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time. All right, this truth will save you. All right, believing in Yahweh Shai, believing in Yahweh, believing that we are Israelites and following after those teachings of Yahweh Shai, which makes us disciples, which teaches us discipline, so that we are not condemned with the world, man. And what does the word condemn mean? Let's go with, within the the uh, the Greek. All right, within Hebrews 11 and 7. The word there, because it says that Noah condemned the world. It's not what we're preaching, con uh, condemning the world. All right, telling you that the Most High Heavenly Father is getting ready to bring a judgment upon the wicked. And you want to get this truth. Why? Because... The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which allows you to under, understand the Bible, all right, which is the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, all right, is a mark of exemption. An, an exemption from what? Exemption from judgment. It says to give judgment against, to judge worthy of punishment. So this earth is worthy of punishment. Here it is, a vibration that's going throughout the earth is homosexuality. You're telling me that's not worthy of punishment? What did Yahweh do to Sodom and Gomorrah? Just to turn around and to forgive the, you know, um, allow homosexual or homosexuality to just go on without any judgment? All right, what about uh, Babylon? What did the Most Heavenly Father do to Babylon? What did he do to Egypt? 
All right, the, the, the place where his people was oppressed. And more so, what are he doing to the old world? As a matter of fact, to grab a scripture within the, the Apocrypha, within 2nd Ezra, the third chapter, and I want to say it's around maybe the, the eighth or ninth verse. Let's see, we're going to find out. Uh, verse, I'll start at verse 7. It says, And unto them, Thou gavest commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed. And immediately thou appointest death in him and in his generations, of whom came nations, tribes, people, kindreds out of out of number. So this is talking about no um Adam. And every people walk after their own will and did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments, which back during the time of, of Adam are the commandments were, were oral. It says, and again in the process of time, brought us the flood upon those that dwelt in the world and destroys them and destroys them why because they walked after their own will all right and did wonderful things those wonderful things were very wicked things that they were doing and you're telling me that he's not going to do anything to to, to uh, this this realm to this world you're telling me he's not going to do anything during this time to bring an exceeding great judgment upon the earth. Reading on, it says, and again, in the process of time, thou broughtest the flood upon those that dwelt in the world and destroyest them. And it came to pass in every of them that as death was to Adam, so was the flood unto these. Nevertheless, one of them thou leftest, namely Noah, all right, namely Noah, with his household, of whom came all righteous men. Reading on, it says, And it happened that when, when they that dwelt upon the earth began to multiply and had gotten to many children and were great of uh, a great people, they began again to be more ungodly than the first. So this, this <laughs> generation that we're living in is more ungodly than the generation that was before it. Just as that generation was more ungodly than the generation that was before that one. So this is an exceeding wicked and evil generation, man. And that's the reason that you're seeing the prophets rise up to prophesy against this place as Noah, all right, rose up and prophesied against the time that he lived in. All right, which he was preaching for 120 years, condemning that place, man. And none of them repented none of them turned from their wicked ways man or their wicked deeds all right to to uh serve yahweh so it said that Noah was condemning the world such as we but the scriptures also says that noah was a preacher of righteousness <laughs> so what he was saying was righteous which means what the things that we're saying against this place is righteous man all right the things that we are saying against this place is righteous. The Lord is getting ready to kill all of you wicked ass people. He's getting ready to destroy all of you wicked ass people. And that's the reason why you're seeing all of these signs and wonders within the earth right now. That's the reason why you're seeing plagues and pestilence and crazy ass weather. All right. One side of the United States of America is on fire and the other side is freezing and shit. All right, hurricanes. You know, a bunch of them at one time, earthquakes in diverse places, all right, uproars and, uh, and, and rumors of wars and commotions and seditions. These things aren't just happening for no reason. These are the things that the prophets are speaking of. Second Peter 4 and uh, 5, it says, And spare not the old world, but save Noah and the eight persons, a preacher of righteousness, and bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. But we're telling you that this time it's not going to be a flood of water, man. All right, the men that are condemning this place that are speaking in righteousness are telling you that Yahweh Shemi Abashah is about to bring very horrible things upon this place. Even worse than what you have seen as of now, man. Our right, things are going to escalate and get gra gradually get worse. All right, there's going to be death everywhere. There's going to be famine everywhere. All right, there's going to be people invading each other everywhere. And this is going to be on every continent, on every soil. All right, there's not going to be a place upon the earth where the Lord's judgment has went out. And then 
when you thought things have gotten worse, then you're going to see the son of man entering into this, this atmosphere. All right. In the whole world, everyone shall behold him and see him. And he's going to kill within those vehicles that he comes in. All right. Especially you unbelievers. He's going to enter into the house of Esau Edom. They're going to take up arms to fight against him within World War III. And he's going to destroy them. But they're going to shoot out thermonuclear missiles. And it's going to be fire that's used to judge the world. And that is the second death. The first death was by the flood, man. All right, the second death is going to be by thermonuclear destruction. This is the book of uh, Revelations, the second chapter, verse 11. It says, he that hath an ear, let him hear. All right, he that hath an ear. If the Most High Heavenly Father have given you ears, spiritual ears to hear, then you hear, man, and you obey, and you listen to the word of the Lord, and you have fear, and you have faith. Hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. That's thermonuclear destruction. Revelation 20 and 6, blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection, on such the second death have no power, but they shall be priests of Yahweh and of, and of Mashiach, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So that's speaking about the 144,000, all right, in which the second death isn't going to touch them. The scriptures say that no torment shall touch them, man. In Revelation 20 and 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and that death and hell that's cast into the lake of fire that's esau edom man all right that that is the second death so how can you cast death and hell into fire and burn it up doesn't make sense especially when people say that hell is a place under the ground where you burn which is fire man so you christians are bugged the hell out revelation 21 and 8 it says but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth are with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So you wicked people within the earth, the Lord is getting ready to destroy you by thermonuclear destruction. And you can say we're wicked, you can say we're evil, for bringing this con uh, for, for bringing this condemnation upon earth and really we're not bringing it we're just speaking the judgment that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh has already pronounced against you all right so what we're prophesying is actually righteous all right Noah was doing the same thing he was telling them that man and you wicked ass people you're getting ready to be destroyed by a flood and for 120 years he was preaching that in righteousness and what, what proves that he was in the right spirit is the fact that the Lord delivered him and destroyed everybody else. So it's going to be to your amazement when these men that you have been condemning are right, for preaching righteousness, telling you that the Lord is going to destroy you for your wickedness. When you see them going up in the chariots and receiving salvation, you're going to know at that moment that you fucked up. You're going to know at that moment you messed up, man. All right, a lot of you Israelites should get on board, man. You should repent and believe upon your Hawashai, but you're not. So guess what? You're going to be destroyed in your wickedness. And with that, a shalom.